lot of people think of the English countryside as an array of hills blanketed by fields of crops, yet there is still a thriving culture spread across many towns and cities. People would not have imagined such diverse and expansive communities, but that's exactly what Holbeach is, an historic town that possesses a devotion to enrich its English heritage. Around 650 AD, Anglo-Saxons settled into the south of the county on an area of dry land naming the village Hollowbeck. The buildings of Holbeach encompass a rich history dating back many centuries. The majority of the buildings in the town centre were built in a Victorian style and many are joined together. Today they are currently used for shops, cafes or fast food outlets as Holbeach clings to the remnants of the tourism industry and trades that have drawn people to the town for so many years. A church at Holbeach was first referenced in 1177 but was replaced by the current structure known as All Saints Church in the mid 14th century. Today's modern church, which took 23 years to build its monumental centrepiece to the town, and it's dominated by the spire, which is 180 feet tall. Inside the church, various historical features captivate the imagination of the visitors, such as the tomb of Lord Littlebury, which is as old as the church. Although he was not born a lord, he married into his name and he is believed to have been the founder of the church, contributing money towards the project. The tomb that is still in a preserved condition has been moved over the years and is believed to have first been at the front of the church when it was first laid. The organ, which is one of only four of its kind in the country, has undergone restoration over the years, such as adding cabling between the organ and the pipes. Looking up at the nave, which was replaced in the Victorian era, features two wooden angels put there by Canon Arthur Brooke, who was the vicar at the time. One of the most incredible features of the church is the stained glass windows. This window tells the story of the sad loss of vicar Phil de Hemmen's daughter in 1896. At the front of the church, above the organ pipes, is a wooden door which can be seen several feet in the air. This is believed to have once been an access door to a raised gantry from where the vicar would address the congregation from above. One strange addition believed to date from the 16th century is the north porch. Once inside, ledges can be seen suspended on the walls. These are the remains of a previous second floor which was accessed via a small spiral staircase. For over a hundred years, this upper room housed the Farmer Free School, founded in 1671 which taught as many as 40 to 50 students at one time. At the very heart of the cemetery stands a unique double chapel with a conjoined spire. The chapels catered for both consecrated and unconsecrated burials. The chapels were built in 1854, and that's when actually the first grave in the cemetery is 1854. Um, they were built um, because in those days there was a need for extra cemetery space. Before that, um, people were buried in the churchyard. And the chapels are fairly grand for wh what Holbeach was in those days. The southern chapel and grounds were consecrated in November 1855 by the Bishop of Lincoln. The northern portion of the chapel, along with its grounds, remains unconsecrated allowing for burials of the Church of England. With over 11,000 burials in the cemetery, thankfully for the town, a research group based around the Cemetery Chapels Trust are now documenting the burials, grave locations and biographies for our future reference. The biographical group have done a lot of research on who is buried and they know where they're buried and the chief uh, leader of that group is Lyndon Secker. Um, the first cemetery trail, when we just picked some of the prominent uh, families and the trail lasted about an hour and people showed a lot of interest actually. Um, and then we did one on Remembrance Sunday, so those were the war graves. At that time we had discovered about 15 war graves in the cemetery and people again were very interested in that and we put some poppies on each. Um, grave, uh, which was the first time it had been done, and we had the British Legion come, and they would like to do that every year. Um, and since then, Lyndon has taken over, and he did a very interesting trail. That was people who died from unnatural causes, 
uh, which was absolutely intriguing, a little bit macabre, but everybody was very interested. Today he's going to do a trail on people's occupations because we thought that the 19th century occupations, a lot of those have disappeared completely now and we will develop more. So there are plenty more trails coming off. We've got one in August and one in September and we'll be doing the Remembrance one again in October. So there'll be a regular feature of what goes on in the cemetery. Some of the people buried here include William Rippon, the blind watchmaker, who has a stained glass window in the church dedicated by his daughter Anne, and Cathy Clark, who was born in the town and spent her career initially as a nurse and then liaison officer in a Polish refugee camp in India. Besides the central path, this area was mostly assigned to Class 7 paupers' burials, multiple burials including one grave place alongside Young, with sometimes six or more to the grave, between 1,000 to 1,500 bodies lying beneath the seemingly undisturbed grass. The Holbeach River, which still remains today, was actually used for trading and shipping. Men of Holland used the Holbeach estuary to harbour in, in the 12th century, a land reclamation that over the years has now resulted in the once important river shrinking down to a minor drain. The original workhouse, built in Penny Hill Road, re was replaced with a new one which opened in 1837 on the border of Holbeach and Fleet. By staying at the workhouse, residents were given free medical care and education for the children. However, despite all this, the workhouse was a horrible place to work. In 1882, the building's master, Walter Bridges, was accused of manslaughter after he placed 22-year-old labourer Thomas William Billingham in a sulphur box, in which sulphur beneath him was ignited by hot iron. This was a common remedy to cure scabies, however the patient must only be in the box for a limited amount of time, which Mr Bingham dramatically exceeded, causing his death moments later. Since its initial use, the workhouse has since been used as a hospital for the mentally ill, and in 2014, the workhouse was converted into a series of flats. In 1858, Holbeach was connected to local towns and cities through the new railway station. This was all part of the Midlands and Great Northern Joint Railway Line. Unfortunately, the station was closed along with the line on the 2nd of March 1959 due to redundancy. Only the station house remains today as flats, whilst the rest on the site have been developed for modern housing. Holbeach is teeming with a whole range of shops. This includes the local supermarket, butchers and many charity shops. But over the past century, only one mill remains and many of the pubs have closed down, leaving only three remaining. Opening in 1958, the George Farmer School opened as the town's first secondary school. With an ageing campus, many thought it was time for an update to the school. And in 2011, the government promoted the school to an academy. The University Academy Holbeach was officially opened by Princess Beatrice in June 2014. Since its founding, Holbeach has been built and refined into its modern and diverse state. Holbeach has soon become not just a home for the locals, but a home for everyone, and its diversity will continue to grow for many years to come.